Hi, this is George Woodbury from the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. In this video, we'll be taking a look at x and y intercepts of linear equations. A point at which a graph crosses the x-axis is called an x-intercept, and a point at which a graph crosses the y-axis is called a y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, substitute 0 for y and solve for x. To find a y-intercept, we substitute 0 for x and solve for y. Here's our first example. We'll find the intercepts of the equation negative 2x plus y equals 13. To find the x-intercept, we put in 0 for y. We have the equation negative 2x equals 13. We solve that by dividing both sides by negative 2. The x-intercept is at negative 13 halves comma 0. Remember to write your intercept in the form x comma y. We put in 0 for y and found that x was negative 13 halves. For the y-intercept, we substitute 0 for x, and we're left with the equation y equals 13, so the y-intercept is at 0, 13. Here's another example involving coefficients that are fractions. To find the x-intercept, we'll put in 0 for y, and we're left with the equation 4 fifths x equals 10. To solve this equation, multiply both sides by 5 fourths, which gives us the solution x equals 50 fourths, or simplified, 25 halves. The x-intercept is at 25 halves comma 0. Moving on to the y-intercept, we substitute 0 for x. We have the equation 3 tenths y equals 10, and we'll solve that by multiplying both sides by 10 over 3. The y-intercept is at 100 thirds. To graph a linear equation using its intercepts, we'll begin by finding the x-intercept and the y-intercept and plotting them on the plane. A third point with an arbitrarily chosen value of x can be used as a checkpoint for your work. Okay. In this example, we'll graph the line 8x minus 2y equals 16. Beginning with the x-intercept, we'll put in 0 for y. We have 8x equals 16, dividing by 8 we have our x-intercept at 2 comma 0. For the y-intercept, we'll put in 0 for x. We have the equation negative 2y equals 16. Divide both sides by negative 2 to see that the y-intercept is at negative 8, 0 comma negative 8. To graph the line, we'll put the x-intercept at 2 on the x-axis and the y-intercept at negative 8 on the y-axis and draw the straight line that passes through those two points. A horizontal line has the equation of the form y equals b. To graph this type of line, we'll plot the y-intercept at 0b on the y-axis and draw a horizontal line through the point. In other words, to graph the line y equals 5, we begin by putting the y-intercept at 0, 5, and then we draw the horizontal line that passes through it. A vertical line will be of the form x equals a. To graph a line in this form, we'll plot the x-intercept at a comma 0 on the x-axis and then draw a vertical line through the point. To graph x equals 2, we put the x-intercept at 2, 0 on the x-axis and draw a vertical line that passes through the point. Here we'll take a look at interpreting intercepts in a real-world situation. A copier was purchased for $7,800. For tax purposes, the machine depreciates at $1,300 per year. If x represents the number of years after the purchase, then the value of the copier y is given by the equation y equals 7,800 minus 1,300x. We're going to go on and find the x and y intercepts and explain the significance of each, and then we'll find the value of the copier after four years. There's the equation at the top of the screen. The x-intercept, substitute 0 for y, add 1300x to the left side, and divide both sides by 1300. We find that the x-intercept is 6. For the y-intercept, we substitute 0 for x, solve for y, the y-intercept is 7800, and here's the interpretation of these two values. The y-intercept tells us that the copier was originally worth $7,800, because the time x was 0. And the x-intercept, 6, tells us that the copier will have no value after 6 years because its y value, the value of the copier, will be 0 at that point. 
moving on to find the value of the comp year after four years, we simply plug in four for x and simplify. The comp year is worth $2,600 after four years. If you have any questions or comments on these or other similar problems, go ahead and visit the contact page at my website, georgewoodbury.com. Thanks.